I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about vitamin D3 as a nootropic, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Vitamin D3, or colicociferol, is unique because it is not a standard vitamin. It's actually a fat-soluble steroid hormone. Vitamin D is mostly made in your skin from sun exposure, not primarily from food like most other vitamins. Ultraviolet B or UVB light from the sun strikes your body and synthesizes vitamin D3. Vitamin D that comes from your skin or from food or from a supplement is not active. It first requires hydroxylation in your liver by the enzyme vitamin D25 hydroxylase. 2,25 OHD. Then 25 OHD requires further hydroxylation in your kidneys by another enzyme to form the biologically active form of vitamin D called colicociferol. You get some vitamin D from foods like fatty fish, tuna, salmon, and mackerel, good examples. Beef liver, cheese, egg yolks, and mushrooms. Now some foods in the USA are fortified with vitamin D. It's added to breakfast cereal, soy beverages, yogurt, and margarine. Check the, uh, the nutrition fact uh, panel on the food label to find out if yours has got vitamin D in it. Colicociferol is also produced industrially for use in nootropic supplements and to fortify foods. It is produced using ultraviolet irradiation of 7-dehydrocholesterol extracted from lanolin in sheep's wool. Vitamin D3 directly and indirectly regulates the function of up to 2,000 genes in your body and brain. Vitamin D works in concert with vitamin D receptors located throughout your body and brain. Recent research shows that vitamin D is involved in nerve growth factor synthesis, which is responsible for the growth and maintenance of neurons. Vitamin D is also involved in neuron apoptosis. Studies have shown that low vitamin D levels interrupts the cell cycle, leading to several neurological disorders including dementia, Parkinson's, MLS, epilepsy, and schizophrenia. Alzheimer's disease is associated with a decrease in vitamin D receptors in the hippocampus. Lack of gene expression from insufficient vitamin D contributes to Parkinson's disease. Low vitamin D is associated with an increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines and a decrease in anti-inflammatory cytokines. The increase in these specific cytokines is associated with the degradation of the myelin sheath, leading to multiple sclerosis. Studies are currently underway for using vitamin D3 to reduce seizures in those dealing with epilepsy. The anticonvulsant effects are based on vitamin D's ability to regulate the expression of genes, a process that is mediated by vitamin D receptors. Scientists and researchers in labs around the world continue to build on the knowledge base for vitamin D and how the sunshine vitamin affects human cognition and overall health. Vitamin D helps relieve depression. Vitamin D activates genes that regulate your immune system and the release of neurotransmitters including dopamine and serotonin. Research has also located vitamin D receptors in areas of the brain linked to depression. A meta-analysis of clinical studies on depression and vitamin D status including 31,414 participants showed that low vitamin D concentrations is associated with depression. One of several other studies on vitamin D in depression showed that older adults with low vitamin D levels were 11 times more likely to be depressed than with normal levels. And if you're currently using antidepressants without much success, this next study might provide some hope. A study conducted in Iran with 42 patients with major depressive disorder participated in a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial one group received 1,500 international units of vitamin D plus 20 milligrams of fluoxetine, or the brand name Prozac, or Prozac alone for eight weeks. In this eight-week trial, the vitamin D plus Prozac combination was superior to Prozac alone in controlling depressive symptoms. 
In the second way, vitamin D is essential for learning and memory. Vitamin D has been shown to play a critical role in neuron cell growth and differentiation, neuron transmission, and neuroplasticity. That's essential for optimal learning and memory. Vitamin D has been shown in the lab to protect against age-related cognitive decline. In one study conducted in Detroit, researchers worked with aged rats. Older rats have problems with cognitive testing along with elevated levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, decreased levels of anti-inflammatory cytokines, and higher levels of amyloid beta proteins in their brains. Supplementing with vitamin D for only 21 days reversed the inflammation and improved the clearance of amyloid beta, showing potential for using vitamin D to prevent age-related cognitive decline. Not too long ago, vitamin D was simply known as the bone vitamin, but there has been a surge in vitamin D research over the last decade. Out of that research was discovered that nearly every cell type and tissue in your body have receptors for this essential vitamin, and quickly changed how we understood the role of vitamin D in the body. We now know that vitamin D deficiency is a problem worldwide. To put this in perspective, studies estimate 64% of Americans don't get enough vitamin D. And that problem is the same around the world. We now have clinical evidence that vitamin D influences our autoimmune system, heart health, it prevents infections, uh, infectious disease, and it supports optimal cognition. Vitamin D deficiency has been linked to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, asthma, autism, depression, cancer, and diabetes. A Japanese study found that 1,200 international units of vitamin D daily reduced the risk of getting the flu by almost 50%. A seven-year study showed that vitamin D deficiency substantially increased the risk of non-Alzheimer's dementia. Another seven-year study associated higher vitamin D levels with significantly lower risks of developing Alzheimer's. Animal and human studies suggest that vitamin D could help in the prevention and treatment of cognitive decline and dementia. If you work or spend most of your time indoors, you're getting less sun than you should. And you may notice that your mood deteriorates relative to the amount of time you spend outside. This is especially noticeable in the winter if you live well north or south of the equator. A capsule of vitamin D3 in the morning is like a little dose of sunshine. You'll fe feel brighter even on the grayest of days. Many who supplement with vitamin D report feeling happier energy levels are higher and feelings of depression stay away. Some report a noticeable decrease in fibromyalgia pain. Pain after exercise is less pronounced. Seasonal depression is officially known as seasonal affective disorder or SAD. Vitamin D3 is a potent remedy for many experiencing seasonal affective disorder. It helps keep that winter depression at bay and it reduces mood swings. Many report that supplementing with vitamin D reduces insomnia, sleep is deeper, and your mood is better the next day. Now, as I mentioned before, studies are going on worldwide on how vitamin D affects our health, including our cognitive health. I've got more detailed studies over on Nootropics Expert in the main transcript for this video. You can click on the link below this video to find it. I've got a study on vitamin D and preventing autism. I've got another study on how vitamin D may prevent dementia and stroke. And I've got another study on how vitamin D uh, prevents depression. So to see these studies, go to the original transcript over on Nootropic Sex for Vitamin D. The Institute of Medicine recommends 4,000 IU or international units per day for vitamin D3. Vitamin D is fat soluble, so make sure that you take it with a meal containing healthy fats or a tablespoon of extra virgin coconut oil or olive oil. A study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition suggests optimal vitamin D status is achieved with a serum or blood 
concentration level of 25 hydroxy vitamin D concentration uh, greater than 75 nanomoles per liter. To achieve blood levels of 100 nanomoles per liter, researchers found that you need a total daily vitamin D supplementation of 4,000 IU. It is possible to get your daily dose of vitamin D from the sun, and total body sun exposure provides the equivalent of 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. But chances are that none of us has the opportunity to sunbathe nude every single day to get our dose of vitamin D. To determine how much vitamin D3 you needed to take to achieve optimal concentrations of this crucial vitamin, researchers recruited 138 volunteers for a six-month randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. The researchers found that if your blood vitamin D status was less than 55 nanomoles per liter, you needed a daily intake of 5,000 IU. And for those above, 55 nanomoles per liter, you need a dose of 3,800 IUs of vitamin D3 per day. The Institute of Medicine also found that the dose for lowest observed adverse effect level is 40,000 IU of vitamin D daily for at least 12 weeks. Get your vitamin D levels checked. Be sure the lab tests for 25-hydroxy vitamin D. To raise your blood levels of vitamin D to optimal levels, you need to take 100 IU of vitamin D3 for each 1 nanogram uh, per milliliter that you need to raise it. Vitamin D is non-toxic, so it's considered well-tolerated and safe. Side effects are rare, but can include dry mouth, fatigue, headaches, uh, metallic taste, nausea, sleepiness, uh, and vomiting. Doses of vitamin D higher than 4,000 IU daily is possibly unsafe because it could cause excess blood levels of calcium. But note that much higher doses are sometimes used for short-term treatment of vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D supplementation could worsen hardening of the arteries. And if you're things like um, hypothyroid or if you've got tuberculosis, vitamin D could increase blood calcium levels causing kidney stones and other problems. Vitamin D may affect blood pressure, so be cautious about using vitamin D if you're dealing with blood pressure disorders or you're taking drugs or supplements that affect blood pressure. Vitamin D may affect blood sugar levels. So if you're taking drugs for diabetes or insulin, you should monitor your vitamin D levels and adjust your medication as necessary. Some drugs used to lower cholesterol or treat uh, psoriasis, calcium channel blockers, corticosteroids, and others may interact with the vitamin D. Over on the original transcript for this video on Nootropics Expert, I've got a link through to the University of Maryland's possible interactions checker. There's a link that you can click through to the University of Maryland and see the section in their article on vitamin D for more drug interactions. The preferred way of getting vitamin D is exposing your skin to the sun. But the color of your skin may affect the synthesis of this essential vitamin. Lighter skin may require 45 minutes of exposure three times per week. Darker skin may require up to three hours of exposure three times per week. But since most of us spend so much time indoors and we have this nasty habit of using sunscreen when we go outside, to maintain adequate vitamin D levels, supplementation is best. Vitamin D3 or colicalciferol is preferred over vitamin D2 since D3 is the form your body synthesizes naturally. A meta-analysis of the Cochrane database investigated mortality rates for those who supplemented with vitamin D2 versus vitamin D3. The analysis of 50 randomized controlled trials, including 95,000 participants, showed a 6% risk reduction among those who used vitamin D3, and a 2% risk increase among those who use vitamin D2. 
The overwhelming evidence shows that you are more likely to die using vitamin D2 than with D3. So if your doctor prescribes synthetic vitamin D2, kindly decline and get a vitamin D3 supplement at your vitamin shop. Vitamin D3 is available in soft gel capsules, tablets, and as a liquid. If you have trouble digesting fat, vitamin D injections are also available by prescription. Calcitriol is a synthetic vitamin D analog available by prescription, which is used by dialysis and hypoparathyroid patients. So my nootropics expert recommendation for vitamin D3 is 4,000 IU per day. And that's my report on vitamin D. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for vitamin D. Or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions, or you want to share your experience using vitamin D, use the comments section at the bottom of the post over on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.